1 Kings 19. Before we read, we'll just do a verse at a time. For a few verses, I just want to let you know what has gone on in our story. Elijah the prophet has just proven the reality of God and the power of God to an apostate nation where sin is rampant. He's just proven that God is still on the throne and that he is still in charge and that he is still fully, sovereignly in control. He and the prophets of Baal have gathered with the northern kingdom of Israel around them in their sinful state and he has said, you build an altar to your God and I will build an altar unto my God. And the God that answers by fire, he is God. So they build altars and the prophets of Baal, they call on their false deities. They don't answer at all and Elijah calls on the name of Yahweh, the name of God. God sends a fire and licks up the stones. The very stones are burnt up, the, the wood is burnt up, the sacrifice is burnt up and there's a trench made and all of it is doused completely with 12 barrels of water and even the water has been completely burnt up and there's nothing left there's nothing left and the reality of God came in the face of all others and all other things and these prophets of Baal they cut themselves they're hoping against hope that some God that they might believe in or someone or something that's taken over their life will answer them and show that the God of Israel, the God that Elijah believes in, that maybe he's not as real as Elijah says, and maybe he can't do as Elijah says, and maybe he isn't the God that we think we hear about. I want to tell you tonight, the God of Elijah is the same God this evening. Amen. He is the same God for you this evening, no matter how you're thinking, no matter what you've been told, no matter the voices in your head and your heart, our God is still on the throne and he is the God of all hope and comfort. Elijah's name means my God is Yah, Elijah, or Yahweh, or Jehovah, as some might say. And Elijah, whose name my God is Yah, proves his God to be true, proves that his God is real. Elijah is a fearsome, fiery, fervent prophet. He is uh, the one who stood before King Ahab, the wicked king in Samaria in the northern kingdom of Israel. He's the one who stood before him and proclaimed the word of the Lord against him and proclaimed the word of the Lord against the sinful nation. He's Elijah whose common cry throughout the book is, as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, or as the Lord God of Israel liveth. He was aware. He was conscious of God. He's Elijah who caused the widow woman's barrel of meal and her cruise of oil not to run out nor run dry when he said to her, give me to eat. She says, I only have a little left. And he says, bake me a cake. And in faith, the woman baked the cake. And Elijah, through his God, blessed the woman that it would not run out. This is the man, the caliber of the man that we are speaking about. He's Elijah who prayed and brought her young son, this woman's son, back to life when he died. He's Elijah, whom the, mother's, the boy's mother said to him, Thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth. It's true, she says of him. He's the same Elijah who came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal... And follow him. Elijah says, look, if God is God, then trust him. Be all out for him and follow him. He's the same Elijah who slew the 450 wicked prophets of Baal. He's the same Elijah who had the wicked king Ahab right at his feet. The king whom all were afraid of, who would think nothing of slaughter, Elijah has him at his feet. He's Elijah who on Mount Carmel prayed and through his prayers, three and a half years of drought was ended in Israel. He is Elijah who ran 
before Ahab's chariot. He said, there's a sound of an abundance of rain at the sign of just one clouded size of a man's hand. A man of faith. And he, through the power of God, outran Ahab's chariot when he ran ahead of him. He is Elijah, which it says of him in the scriptures in 1 Kings 18 and verse 46. Listen, in the hand of the Lord was upon him. And the hand of the Lord was upon him. What a resume for anyone to have. What a witness, what a standard, what a testimony, what a mighty man of faith Elijah was. Yet, in our reading that we're about to read in, in 1 Kings chapter 19, four things happen in the first four verses. First of all, we have Ahab's report. The wicked king goes to his wife Jezebel, or Isabel, as her name is, and it means Baal or Baal exalts. Ahab told Jezebel, there's his report. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And then in verse 2, we have Jezebel's reply. And Jezebel sent a messenger on to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me. And more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And then thirdly, in verse 3, we have Elijah's response. And when she saw that, when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. And came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servants there. In the northern kingdom, he escapes to the southern kingdom of Judah to find safety from one woman with one bad report, with a bad spirit. Fear enters his heart and Elijah feels he must run. And then in verse 4, we have Elijah's regression. Elijah's regression. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, Take, my, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Elijah now finds himself in, a pla- himself in a place of depression. This mighty man of faith and power, this mighty man of passion and courage, this mighty man who's proved God, he's now in a place of depression. How can this happen? How does this happen? You see, many Christians wonder about this, about themselves or about others. Many Christians think this could never happen as it's already been told us tonight. This can never happen to me because I'm a Christian. And so it leads to, or can lead to, become a, it's a taboo word, it's a bad word that just shouldn't be talked about when the Christian is in poor mental health. Some feel mental health is a Christian shame. And they think themselves to be outcasts from society and even the church. And this becomes a further struggle upon the man or the woman and a heavier burden for them to bear, something harder for them to deal with. In 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 4 it says, He requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. So how does this happen to a man of faith and a man of fire like Elijah? The Bible tells us how. Very simply. James tells us in James chapter 5 and verse 17. He says, Elias saw Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Let me put it plain and simple in four words. Elijah was a man. Elijah was a man. That's how it happens. Elijah was only a man. Someone once said, depression, anxiety, and panic attacks are not signs of weakness. They are signs of trying to remain strong for far too long. Many people, their mind breaks because they've tried to remain strong through adversity. 
For too long they have held up others. And they have been the brunt and the burden bearer. Something happens and they no longer can withhold the strain and the load. It seems here the case for Elijah. He was a man. He's a man of flesh and blood. He's like you and he was like me. I'm not better than my fathers, he says. And later on in the chapter, Elijah's hiding in a cave and the Lord finds him in the cave and says, what doest thou here, Elijah? And Elijah again is, he's peeking out of the cave with fear. Hiding now from the world and he says in verse 14 of chapter 19, I, even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away. He find his mind and his mood has changed. Notice, he says, I am not better than my fathers. And then he says, I, only I am left. He feels worthless at one place. He feels alone at another. Worthless and alone. Fear, loneliness, isolation. Another anonymous quote I wrote was this. Never give up on someone with a mental illness. When I is replaced with we, illness becomes wellness. When I is replaced with we. To Elijah in the cave, God says, I have 7,000 left in Israel. You know what God said to Elijah? Elijah, You may think you're on your own. You're not alone. You're not going through this on your own. Not only am I with you, not only do I know where you are, but I have 7,000 men in Israel who have still not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. In our reading in verse 5, in our chapter, chapter 19, An angel is dispatched to help Elijah. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and led him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. The journey is too great for thee. God knew the physical and the mental capacity of his prophet. He says, the journey is too great for thee. And the title of our message this evening is, is, when the journey is too great for you. When the journey is too great for you. He says, arise and eat the second time because the journey is too great for you. The angel, was he reminding him of the widow woman baking the cake? The widow woman who previously... He says, bake me the cake and the, the, the barrel of, of meal and the cruise of oil didn't run out. Was the angel saying, look, Elijah, that, I want you to see that the same God who caused that oil to flow, who caused that barrel of meal to last, the same God is your God and your God is the same God and he is with you right now. Was he saying, I want to bring your mind back. I want to bring your memory in to let you see You're not on your own, and lo, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That I am the same when your mind changes. When our mood alters, he always remains the same. No change. Jehovah knows. No change, Jehovah knows. Here we find, he says, the journey, the word journey is the road, the path, the way, the direction, or the course of life. The course of life. He says, Elijah, the course of life, it's, it's too great for you. You're relying on your own strength, Elijah. And you can see how weak and frail the human really is. Elijah was a man. That's how you remember. Elijah was a man. Ken is a man. Alan is a man. Alison is a woman. Without Christ, we're flesh and blood. But he has promised, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. 
the course of life, it does at times get too much for people. And whether it's divine intervention by the praying and laying on of hands, whether it is divine intervention through an angelic ministry, the Holy Ghost moving on a man or a woman, whether it's divine ministry, God answering straight from his word from heaven, or whether it is human encouragement on earth, God is able to send a messenger, maybe just like revived ministry, to say you're not on your own. We're here to help. What about Elijah's future? Well, Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5, the Lord says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, Elijah the prophet, he talks about the ministry in a church where the Elijah ministry would be the Spirit of God. That's the spirit and power of Elijah. When God will raise up men and women in church to be that miraculous body, to be those people who will reach out, who will empathize with those who have the same problems that Elijah had. And know the answer or help them find their way. Notice this. It was Elijah who was on the Mount of Transfiguration when the vision in Matthew 17 with Moses and Elijah there. Elijah was, the vision was of Elijah. And you might say, what does that matter? Because you see, there's Christians who think because I have uh, poor mental health and because it's maybe taken me in a way that, well, maybe God's finished with me and maybe there's no hope left for me or maybe I'm never going to go on in God or maybe God won't use me in any sort of a way. And that's wrong. Because here is Elijah under a juniper tree and God sends his angel, dispatches him to say, Elijah, I know you, I'm with you, and I'm here for you. And then he says, listen, I think so much of you. There's going to be many more with the spirit you have in the church who are going to be able to reach a lost nation and a lost people. And I'm going to use ordinary men and women. I'm going to use flesh and blood. Elijah was a man. And when the journey was too great for him, his great God carried him and took him on. Is the journey too great for you? Maybe you think that tonight. God is the same. To lift you up and to take you on. I'm going to close in a moment. I want to thank you for your attention. There's something else I want to look at just as I do. Thirdly, by saying this, We think sometimes that when we look at Elijah, well, Elijah, he was tired, maybe so. He was just down, maybe so. Whatever depths Elijah was there in, one thing is certain. One thing is certain. He couldn't just shake it off. He needed the Lord to come to minister. He needed help. He needed his body help. Uh, eight, Elijah, eight. He needed spiritual help, guidance. It does not define Elijah. It does not define him. Elijah is still known as the great prophet. It doesn't define him. When a person goes through the struggle, when the person goes through the dark trial and season and time, it doesn't define you. Every time when I read in Scripture of someone with any illness, it says there was a man who was sick of the palsy. There was a man who was a leper. There was a woman who had the issue of blood. God didn't define her by that which had come, nor him by which, that which had come. And God doesn't define you by saying that you have been ill or unwell. But rather he sees you. 
he sees the man. The, Elijah was a man. He sees the woman. And he says, I am with you. And you're not alone. This does not define you. You are more. You are more than what the illness would say to you. Folks, we believe fully, totally, in the power of God to heal all manner of illness. And we believe fully and totally that God sends along human hands to be a support and to succor us. Believe fully in it. We want to be praying for revive, especially for Alan and Allison and their family. Would you be praying, please, for the ministry as it goes forth because we're hoping that we'll go out to help others. And we are going to be looking at places where we can go to reach those who are in our need. And it goes beyond these four walls. And maybe people out there would say, the journey's too great for you. But we're here to help. We're here to help. Father, will you bless this ministry? Will you encourage Alan and Allison? Would you put your hand upon it? Give them wisdom and knowledge from on high. Father, thank you that you love us whatever way we are. And we pray in Jesus' name that your glory would be known and that in all these things Christ would be exalted. For Jesus' name's sake we pray. Amen. 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 Alan Allison, God bless you.